Hello and welcome to Geek Out with Perry. We launched the Microsoft Trust Center, which contains information on our privacy practices in Office 365 and Exchange Online. But we still get a lot of questions from customers around how we manage the privacy and security of their data in Exchange Online. So what I wanted to focus on today is how we manage access and exchange online. I know we've discussed RBAC in the past, but what else do we do to manage access? Right. Well, we've talked in the past a bit about how we've tried to engage the entire engineering team in running the service. Mm -hmm. um, that means there's a lot of people potentially with uh, access to the data center. So we have to spend a lot of time thinking about uh, making sure that that's well controlled. Um, the first thing, uh, uh, sort of the, the the basis of all of this is that everybody has to go through a fairly thorough background check um, okay. to make sure that uh, we, everybody is uh, who we think they are, uh, working for us and not foreign <laughs> companies or foreign governments, um, uh, or not working for themselves. Um, so uh, we think we've got uh, a really good story there. Um, and of course, uh, as you mentioned, that we have our RBAC system that allows us to create roles and tightly control who's got access to what based on what they need to do. Mm -hmm. But we don't think that it that's sufficient. Okay, so what else do we do in order to manage access? Right, so uh, the, the key principle that we've been operating on is the idea of zero uh, elevated access. Okay. So that nobody at, uh, at, during normal operations has access to anything. Uh, we think that's important because there's an awful lot of things that even you sort of think of as regular non-destructive operations like just rebooting a single service mm -hmm. or uh, installing a new server can have big implications in the, in the system if you're doing it with uh, uh, in bulk, right? If yep. you restart all the servers in the system, you're actually going to create a, a service outage. Or if you install on top of a perfectly functioning server, uh, mm -hmm. you can do a lot of damage. So uh, even just to prevent mistakes and uh, not uh, not even worrying about malicious activity, uh, you want to make sure that nobody is going to be doing things w when they're, they're not realizing it. So. People do not have access uh, in normal circumstances. So let's take a scenario. Somebody wakes up in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. they get a call, they do a little bit of an investigation, and they discover that they need to restart a service. Um, they're a little grumpy, uh, and they've got something that's going to take them 10 seconds to, uh, to fix the, the, get the, the system back online. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a bug that's going to follow up to fix the underlying issue, but to restore service, they need to restart something. So how are they going to do that? Because they can't do that mm -hmm. uh, out of the box. All right? And uh, the thing that allows them to do that is something called lockbox. The, the, the grumpy engineer makes a request, explicit request, to elevate his pr privileges for the operation that he needs to do. Okay. Okay. Lockbox then checks uh, whether or not his scope of his role allows him to actually get that elevated pr uh, privilege. Okay. And if it, it can decide that yes, it does have it, in which case it'll grant the, the permission, let's say starting a, re a service, okay. for a limited period of time mm -hmm. and make him a nice happy engineer who gets to go back to bed in 30 seconds after he's got the, the service uh, uh, up and running and uh, confirmed that it's all functioning. Okay. Or it could decide that uh, no, that, that uh, the operation there is within his scope but does require somebody else to, uh, another human being to get involved. Okay. The principle here is the same principle as, you know, two people being required to launch uh, 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 nuclear uh, missiles, right? Mm -hmm. you, got, uh, you have to have two people to confirm uh, uh, certain kinds of operations. Uh, these things can be, again, like uh, doing uh, install work or stuff like that require uh, okay. an extra level of uh, operations. Usually it involves things that are going to write data okay. or delete data uh, are the things that are potentially permanently uh, destructive. Okay, so uh, that sends off a mail to uh, another engineer who doesn't have access to, to the request, uh, checks it, uh, uh, gives permission, and then permission is granted um, through an automatic system. Uh, and all of this, all of these uh, requests then get audited, and we've got mm -hmm. a choke point that we can review and monitor every single uh, uh, incident of elevated uh, privileges that go through in the system over the course of uh, the previous week or the previous day, and uh, review those uh, with re regular meetings. Mm -hmm. So uh, overall, we think this uh, system provides the absolute minimum amount of elevated pri privileges at any given time. Okay. Only those operations absolutely necessary uh, uh, are permitted during the period in which they are needed, okay. but uh, as soon as the privileges are not needed, they're automatically revoked, uh, and we're back to a situation in which he's working on a, on a test system and is doing a bunch of operations, he can't make the mistake of, uh, uh, of doing those operations against the live service. They will simply fail.
Okay. Thanks, Perry. And thanks for watching and learning about our lockbox technology in Exchange Online. Please continue to watch all of the Geek Out with Perry videos and check out Perry's blog.